All right, the Senate will come back to order. Senator from the 23rd, 23rd House Bill 156. Chair recognize 156. No? Oh, you have it? Oh, you're carrying that? Okay. Chair recognize Senator from the 6th. Chair Gnai, Senator from the 6th, you moving it off the table? Mr. President, I move that we remove House Bill 156 from the table. Read the caption. House Bill 156 by Representative Neal of the Second and others. A bill to be entitled an act to amend code section 16-12-100.2 of the OCGA relating to computer or electronic pornography and child exploitation prevention and for other purposes. The Committee of the Senate on Judiciary and on Civil recommends that this bill do pass by substitute. The Judiciary Non-Civil Committee offers the following substitute to House Bill 156, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Part 2 of Article 3 of Chapter 12 of Title 16 of the OCGA relating to offenses against minors generally so as to modernize provisions of the code relating to sexual conduct and technology and for other purposes. Amendment 1, Senator Hill of the 6th and others offer the following amendment. Amend the Senate Judiciary Non-Civil Committee substitute to House Bill 156 by deleting 3 and 6 from line 29 by replacing consent with permission on lines 33, 61, 86, 87, and 141 and for other purposes. Through with the order, Mr. President. Is there objection? Without objection, the bills are removed from the table. Chair recognize the Senator from the 6th. Present the bill. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is House Bill 156. This is, uh, well, it's, fr it's frankly not a laughing matter. This is very important. This is uh, a bill to amend our child pornography statutes to better protect our children. Uh, the bill, this bill was initially brought to us by the GBI when we found that uh, we weren't able to prosecute some really bad actors out there, um, you know, as they were manipulating our children, frankly, uh, in, the, in the cyber world um, and in just how we were enticing young people to get engaged uh, in, in pornography. So this bill um, not only makes it a higher crim uh, crime to be engaged in those activities, but it also protects our young people in this modern age from being uh, prosecuted as felons uh, if they're playing around with their, their cell devices uh, or their computers in ways that they frankly shouldn't be, but that we certainly don't want them to have a, uh, a felony on their record if they do so. Um, I'm going to go through some of these talking points to better clarify some of the things I'm telling you, um, and then I'd, I'd certainly be available for questions. Uh, this includes language added by agreement between the prosecution and defense bar and child advocates to address the issue of sexting between teenagers. A teenager who sends or receives sexual materials to or from another teenager through a smartphone or similar device uh, should not face the same pu punishment as an adult predator who sexually exploits a child. But we needed to make sure the laws were tight enough uh, to get the people who had bad intentions. Under current laws regarding sexting offenses, child and teenage offenders are subject to the same penalties as adult offenders. Um, so this creates that what I mentioned, a Romeo and Juliet exception to our child pornography laws so that when a young people, when a young couple shares explicit texts or emails with one another, it will be treated as a misdemeanor rather than a felony. So those are some of the, the, the main points, but this is an important provision uh, and I hope that you'll support it. If there are no questions, I will yield the well. There is a question, Senator. Chair and I, Senator from the 41st for a question. Uh, Senator, I probably can wait till 
someone else works on the amendment. Uh, are you going to address the amendment, or did you? I will address the amendment uh, when, it, when after. it's available. Okay, sounds good, Senator. I'll wait and see the author about my question. Oh, it, it is it is available. Okay, um, you know, essentially the amendment re removes 16-12-100B3 uh, and. Um, well, how about I'll just take any questions you may have on the amendment or the bill. Chair, recognize Senator on the 42nd. Will the, will the Senator yield? Yes. Is it not true that the, that the changes in this amendment came directly from legislative council and are merely language changes that, that improve the bill and make sure that it's consistent throughout? That is correct. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. No further questions, Senator. Thank you. Question is on the adoption of the floor amendment authored by the Senator from the 6th, 54th, and others. Is there objection? Without objection, the floor amendment is adopted. Now the question is on the adoption of the committee substitute as amended. Is there objection? Without objection, the committee substitute is adopted as amended. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the bill? Is there objection? Agree in the Porter Committee, which failed to pass the bill. Chair hears none. The Porter Committee has agreed to. Shall the main question be now put? Are there any objections? The chair is none, and the main question is ordered. Shall this bill now pass? Questions on the pass of the bill. All those in favor of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed, no. Secretary will unlock the machine. <laughs> senator from the six, your lights on. Did you wish to? No. Well, on the passage of the bill, the yeas are 49, the nays are zero, but unfortunately, the author didn't even have enough confidence to vote for his own bill. <laughs> Probably one of the most important bills to come through the legislature, and he couldn't stand up and have the backbone to vote for it. He's freshman. I do not know what we're going to do with them. Chair recognizes Senator from the 52nd. Mr. President, I would request that uh, House Bill 179 be moved off the table. 177? 9? I think we're looking for 177. Oh, is it the 25th?
Chair, recognize Senator from the 25th, 25th. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to move House Bill 177 from the table. Read the caption. House Bill 177 by Representative Wilkinson of the 52nd and others. A bill to be entitled an act to amend code section 12-3-402 of the OCGA relating to the creation and operation of the Oconee River Greenway Authority and for other purposes. The Committee of the Senate on Natural Resources and the Environment recommends that this bill do pass. Through with the order, Mr. President. Chair recognize Senator from the 25th, even though he didn't wait at his desk to be recognized. <laughs> These freshmen breaking rules, not voting. Thank you, Mr. President. I have a very simple bill uh, dealing with the Oconee River Greenway Authority. I think even my friend from the 12th will be able to vote on this one with me. Uh, it is actually adding, it uh, pertains to Baldwin County and Wilkerson County, and they would like to have the ability to add two new s seats to their authority from each respected counties. And I would love to have your favorable consideration on this bill. If there's no further questions, Mr. President, I yield the will. <laughs> have a question, Senator, from the 31st, if you wish to ask. Senator Yule. Yes, sir. I, I, I may have already asked you this question, but do, do those members get paid per diem? For no, sir. Serving on that committee? No, sir. It's totally voluntary. Okay, thank you. I think that's it. Thank you. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the bill? Is the objection granted? Porter Committee, which favor pass the bill? Chair is none. Porter Committee is agreed to. All those in favor, vote aye. Those opposed, no. Secretary, unlock the machine. On the pass of the bill, the yeas are 52, the nays are 1, and this bill, MC Rex Constitution Majority, is therefore adopted. Chair recognize, Senator, from the 20th. 20th. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, like to take House Bill 226 off the table. 226, read the caption. House Bill 226 by Representative Nix of the 69th and others. A bill to be entitled an act to amend part one of Article 2 of Chapter 8 of Title 12 of the OCGA relating to solid waste management generally so as to revise certain requirements related to tire transportation, storage, and disposal, and for other purposes. The Committee of the Senate on Natural Resources and the Environment recommends that this bill do pass by substitute. The Natural Resources and the Environment Committee offers the following substitute to House Bill 226. A bill to be entitled an act to amend Part 1 of Article 2 of Chapter 8 of Title 12 of the OCGA relating to solid waste management generally so as to revise certain requirements and for other purposes. Amendment 1. Senator Wilkinson of the 50th and others offer the following amendment. Amend House Bill 226 by striking lines 14 through 20 and inserting in lieu thereof the following. Two solid waste management definitions by revising paragraphs 32 and 39 and adding two new paragraphs to read as follows. 
Amendment 2, Senator Tollison of the 20th offers the following amendment. Amend the substitute to House Bill 226 by striking or on line 88 and replacing or with or on line 91. By striking line 151 and inserting in lieu thereof the following, a tire retailer or publicly owned vehicle maintenance facility and for other purposes. Through with the order, Mr. President. Chair, is there objection? Without objection, uh, the bill will be removed from the table. Chair, recognize Senator from 20th. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, all this bill really does is dealing with the scrap tire issue out there and doing some defining and cleaning up and helping EPD with uh, some uh, definitions and all that are not in the rules. And uh, so this, this has nothing to do with the solid waste trust fund. It has nothing to do with the dollar fee on scrap tires. Uh, it also adds in definition used tires because used tires are taken and uh, retreads are put on them and they're sold as uh, good tires. So that's kind of included in the definition also. And, um, but we've you know, obviously had a, a lot of trouble over the years with uh, scrap tires being dumped out in the, uh, out in the countryside uh, and uh, we're trying to help with that. Legitimate haulers of the uh, scrap tires will have a window decal on them uh, from now on. And they'll have to pay like a ten dollars to get one of those. It's a, but that's something that came up from the scrap tire industry. They felt like that having all the haulers of scrap tires have a decal on their truck uh, would help them out, and they would know who's legitimate and who is not. Um, counties and cities and state governments and all that uh, are exempt from this uh, permit requirement. Um, it also puts in there how many scrap tires, if you're a tire dealer, how many tires you can have stored and you have to have them, uh, also have to have them behind uh, locked up so nobody can steal them and, uh, and things like that. The Tire Dealers Association is in support of these changes and in support of the storage of tires and make it a little harder for everybody to, uh, to uh, steal them. Um, Anyway, it breaks down also that uh, you have to have a bond if you're a hauler of tires and uh, anywhere from th 5000 uh, to really, from, well, $10,000 to $20,000 on the bond. And that is, a, uh, that is a, uh, a, about a $5,000 decrease, but it takes about, most of these sites cost about $10,000 at minimum to get cleaned up. So we wanna make sure everybody's got a bond on that. Uh, if you're in farming, a lot of farms use uh, old tires to hold down, um, hold down uh, polyethylene or whatever they put over covering stuff with, some of their, their uh, hay and things like that. Um, they can still use up to that 100 uh, tires to do that. If they need more, they can, all they got to do is call EPD and they'll give them a, a, a farm approval to use more tires than that. Um, you got also uh, a lot of companies that have big fleets, uh, whether it be like a Georgia Power, a AT&T, a Coca-Cola, a, a UPS, or any of those kind of things, and they can store up to uh, 500 tires where previously it could only store up to 100. So this is really just refining the scrap tire uh, definitions and what, how many people can store and, uh, and things like that. So it's nothing uh, changing uh, other than uh, new definitions and refining the scrap tire uh, rules and regulations and things. With that, Mr. Uh, President, I'll take questions and yield the well. Chair, recognize Senator from the 40th for a question. Does Chairman yield? Yes, sir. I, I'm trying to read your amendment one. Are we missing part of amendment one? I'm sorry. We did have, yeah, we have an amendment. There was a composting uh, definition that got stuck on this bill coming through the process, and that really doesn't have anything to do with, um, with the uh, scrap tire business. And so, uh, and there's some issues around the state with, with composting right now. Okay. And so we agreed to, to have that taken off because that really has nothing to do with this bill. Would you feel the year one more time? Sure. 
The part about uh, revising paragraphs 32 and 39 and adding two new paragraphs, is that just tracking language that's already in here, That the way it reads? I'm sorry. The way this reads is by revising paragraphs 32 and 39 and adding two new paragraphs to read as follows, colon, and then it's blank. Are they yes. already in the bill? That's correct. Okay, that's what I thought. That's Thank correct. you very much. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Mr. President, if there are no more questions, I'll go back and take my nap. <laughs> Chair recognized Senator from the 39th. Uh, Senator, will you yield? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm sorry. Could so, you give, I, I didn't uh, catch your explanation of amendment number two. Okay. Would you be able to, would you mind expanding, expanding on your, uh, on your explanation of amendment two. The, this, this amendment number two was brought by a lot of people in the industry as the, the bill kind of had gotten through the process and come out of committee. And uh, that's all that does. It's like the first part of that amendment talks about uh, publicly owned uh, vehicle maintenance facility. They can store up to 1,500 tires. It, it kind of defines it so they'll know. Uh, the bat last part of it is just uh, there again, I talked about agriculture early, and that's just saying in in that bill that agriculture uh, can uh, uh, can use those hundred tires, and then they also can um, EPD will give them a, a permit to go over that. Thank you very much. Recognize the senator from the 19th for a question. Well, Senator Eel. Yes, sir. Senator, I, I'm not understanding what your second amendment does and I'm I'm sorry but I'm um, I'm a little bit, bit behind trying to find the bill to see what it actually does but my concern is I work on commercial trucks mm -hmm. we probably have and we have of our own we have probably 8,000 tires on the road and we're always changing them so we may have more than a thousand tires and it looks like that what you're doing in the First Amendment is striking 3,000 and going to 1,500. And then in the second one, you're changing, maybe you're changing the definition from an auto salvage yard to include people that are working on commercial vehicles and limiting it to 500. My, my question, I guess, is are you making it more difficult for people who are working on vehicles or have a shop that works on commercial vehicles or or no we're not. not we're not trying to do that at all but what we're trying to do is define so you know if you've got 1500 tires out there if they're scrap tires uh these are you, scrap tires you got to start moving them on you're going to have to you can't just let them keep piling up and piling up and building up uh that's where we're getting in trouble around the state from Senator all the Senator Further Yield. Yes, sir. Senator, I'm, I'm storing them on tractor trailer vans. They're not on the ground. I'm storing them on tractor trailer vans. They're locked yeah. up, and from time to time we haul them off. But I need to know if, you, if you're putting more onus on folks like me to. No, I don't think so. And if you're storing them in those vans, I think you're covered uh, because you've got them protected, you've got them covered. You basically, uh, I think you would be Senator, in great shape. One more question. Sure. Who, who in the industry can I talk to out there that can help me understand what I've... Well, I think you, you could either, in the industry, or you could talk to EPD and, and ask them, but I think you'd be fine because you've got them stored in vans, and that makes a lot of difference than just laying on the ground. No doubt. Chair recognizes Senator from the 14th for a question. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Will Senator yield? Yes, sir. I ain't got nowhere to go till midnight. <laughs> I'll be here with you, brother. Yes, sir. Um, I just want to make sure I understand the scope of what we're doing. Uh, on page four, uh, where it's, it's section C regarding the transport of scrap tires, uh, starting lines 94. It, as I read that, it, it looks like it's a, a total prohibition on transporting anything but a new tire. And my question is, if 
if I change my own tires at home and want to transport those tires to a, a, a one of these compactor sites or a recycling station, or I want to build yeah. a, a tire swing in my backyard and I go to a, a yard sale and I pick up a scrap tire, am I going to be in violation of this law no, if I don't no, have a No, you're permit? not. You're not. And it actually even says in here, and I'm sorry, I can't uh, find where it is now, but um, it, it says an individual uh, can, can haul like 10 tires. You got four on your car and may have four on your wife's car and you changed all of them. You can haul those. It's no problem. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for Thank the clarification. You. Chair, recognize Senator Member 28. He's the last one. Thank you, Mr. President. Does the uh, Senator yield? Yes, sir. Could you uh, explain to me on line 94 if it says no person, no person shall collect or transport any tire other than new? Um, unless the person has a permit and, uh, and displays it properly on their vehicle. I brought two tires home from the, the tire store the other day mm -hmm. uh, when I had new tires put on my daughter's vehicle. I would be in violation of this law according no, to the way no, it's No, you no, really, you really won't. And this is about people getting in the transporting business, not you going to the store and buying two tires or me going to the store and buying two tires. What uh, we've gotten into is people are transporting tires uh, and, and, and then they're also in there, a lot of times they're just dumping them. But you would, you would not have a problem at that by going and buying two tires at the store. Well, I might if my sheriff decides I do because on line 68, Senator, it says the sheriff or sheriff deputy has the authority to enforce the provisions of subsection C of this code. And as the law reads, and we must be clear because the law is specific and it is our guideline. I understand that. It could have probably been better written. Do you not agree? I still say that you'll be fine. This is saying that they can use the, uh, the, the sheriff and police and all that can be part of the system of trying to help out with the dumping of uh, the tires out here around the state, which is a massively huge problem. Uh, but you as an individual person going to buy a couple of tires, you're fine. You literally won't have a problem. No further questions, Senator. Thank you very much. I appreciate you voting for this bill to help clean up the tire problem in the state of Georgia. Senator from the 50th, do you need to speak to the amendment? You're recognized to do so. Mr. President, members of the Senate, I'd just like to reiterate uh, what you've already heard regarding this first amendment. This is a tire recycling and uh, disposal bill, and there are four lines in here, 16 through 20, that have to do with composting and the definition of composting, and there are some serious issues related to that, and we just felt like it would be a lot cleaner if we just struck those four lines. And uh, the senator, the author of the bill, is in support of this amendment. Mr. President, if there are no questions, I'll yield the well. Thank you, Senator. No questions. <clears throat> the question is on the floor amendment authored by the senator from the 50th. Is there objection? Without objection, amendment one is adopted. Now the question is on amendment number two. Is there objection? Without objection, amendment number two is adopted. Question now is on. Your light came on. Your light's on, Senator. From the 50th. The question is on the adoption of the committee substitute as amended. Is there objection? Without objection, committee substitute as amended is adopted. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the bill? Is there objection? Agree in the Porter Committee wish to favor or pass the bill? Chairs, none. Porter Committee is agreed to. Shall the main question be now put? Are there any objections? The chairs, none. And the main question is ordered. Shall this bill now pass? Question is on. The pass of the bill. All of those in favor of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed, no. Secretary will unlock the machine.
on the pass of the bill, the yeas are 46, and the nays are 7. And this bill, the Hampshire Rex Constitution Majority, is there for pass. Senator from the 38th is recognized. 38. Mr. President, I ask um, that we remove from the table House Resolution 73. Read the caption. House Resolution 73 by Representative Hugley of the 136th and others. A resolution compensating Mr. Nathan Rydell Word and for other purposes. The Committee of the Senate on Appropriations recommends that this bill do pass. Amendment 1, Senator Kalsert of the 46th and others offer the following amendment. Amend H.R. 73 by inserting after thereafter on line 30 the following. In the event Mr. Word is convicted of a felony offense, such payments shall cease and the remainder of the payments shall sheet to the general fund of the state treasury. Through with the order, Mr. President. Is there objection? Without objection, the bill will be removed from the table. And the chair recognizes the senator from the 38th to present H.R. 73. Good afternoon, colleagues. I'm going to keep this very short on H.R. 73. It is a compensation bill that we passed last year, and because of a change in um, what was done here, it went over to the House and it died in the last minutes of the session. Uh, you know the, the, the information. You received a letter from Mr. Word a couple of days ago, I believe it was yesterday, explaining the situation. Basically what happened was that he was um, convicted of having robbed a store he spent 11 years in jail. Um, he won an appeals, and when they went and did the appeals, it was determined that the person who actually said that he robbed the store, now in prison for murder, um, said that no, he did not um, commit this crime, that he was sorry that he had said that to begin with. Uh, so as a result of that, the judge um, decided that, well, not just that, but it was determined that, that, that the lawyer that represented him did not do his due diligence, and as a result of that, uh, the judge said that he needed to, um, they overturned uh, his conviction. So it's a simple piece. The man has spent 11 years um, in jail. He was stabbed while he was in jail six times. Um, and, and as I said, I've already discussed it with you, and you know all the information regarding it. So if there are no questions, um, colleagues, I will yield the well. There, there's no question, Senator. Thank you. Chair recognizes Senator from the 13th to speak to the bill. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, distinguished members of the Senate. I wanted to come to the uh, podium just to state a few facts. This is kind of like a trial in that you really are the decider of the facts. You determine the weight, force, and credit to be given to the testimony and evidence in the case. Now, as has been indicated, uh, this occurred back in, on, he was convicted on September the 7th in the year 2000. His conviction was overturned on March the 23rd, 2011. He was re, uh, released on June the 20th, 2011. Now it's ironic that the eyewitness who pointed him out as the person who robbed the store, uh, some 11 months later, was convicted of the charge of murder 
in Muskogee County. You will recall in the facts, the facts indicated that the person who was robbed and who pointed out uh, this defendant as the culprit, that was his first day on the job. And I would venture to say that was probably his last job because he began this crime, life of crime, and uh, as I said, was convicted of murder on December the 31st, 2001, and is now serving a life sentence in the state prison in Lowndes County, Georgia. As I said, this is a question of credibility. And uh, I think you only have to go back and decide the credibility of the witnesses on the day of the alleged robber. Are you going to believe a young man who is going to enlist in the Marine Corps some five days later? Are you going to believe one who has been convicted of murder? Now, some might say that the guy who pointed him out for whatever reason, recanted his testimony. Maybe after all these years, he wanted to do the right thing. But I would just ask you to determine the credibility of the witnesses on the day that the robbery occurred, and I believe that you can give more weight to the young man who was uh, going in the Marines than one who was later convicted of murder. As I said, uh, this is your vote. You do what you think is right. But I would ask you to consider what if this was your son or this was your daughter? How would you feel about that? What's interesting about this case is that he was convicted, sent to prison in 2000. It was some 11 years later before his conviction was overturned. And you and I see friends of the Court of Appeals very often in the restaurant at CLOB, they are required to hear and rule on cases no longer than six months. For whatever reason, this young man sat in prison without a lawyer, without any legal representation, without anybody rep representing his interest for more than 10 years. As a judge, past judge, I can tell you I have seen uh, uh, on occasions where a lawyer would abandon his client. And I think that's what happened here, that uh, this young man was abandoned by his lawyer. As I said, you vote like you will. But I'll tell you, I'm going to push the green button. This guy has been hammered twice. He was hammered by his lawyer. He was hammered by the witness. And it's up to you if you want to hammer him again. But I'm going to push the green button and pull that nail from his heel and let him walk down the road with a little money in his pocket. If there are no questions, I will yield well. There are no questions for you, Senator. Thank you. Chair, I recognize Senator Room 56 speak to the bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, I have an amendment that just changes one thing about the payment schedule for this gentleman. He is being paid a hundred thousand lump sum up front and the remaining three hundred thousand in an annuity that pays him over twenty years in equal payments. This simply says if during that twenty year period he is convicted of another felony offense, those annuity payments shall cease and shall be returned to the general fund of the state. I think that's fair. We're giving him a break if this passes. Uh, but this will hold him accountable, make him be a law-abiding citizen if he's going to enjoy the benefits of a state annuity uh, for the next 20 years. So I would ask favorable consideration, and I will yield the well unless there are any questions. Chair, can I send him 31st for a question? Or, do you have a question? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Senator from the 42nd, you have a question? Well, Senator, yield. I yield. 
Is there, people settle cases for damages all the time. And in this case, the legal system has determined that Mr. Word was wrongly convicted. Why would we put this restriction on him when we don't do it to anybody else in any sort of similar situation where they get paid for damage that's been done? To make sure that he continues to abide by the law. I don't, I don't see us spending tax money to give this man 20, 30 grand a year if he's in prison for another felony offense. But, but that would be true for anybody that we give any money to ever. I mean, you know, and, and would, I, so why would we single him out, I guess is my question. Because we're using taxpayer money for this. We're not using a civil settlement uh, in a civil lawsuit. This is a, a gift from the state. Well, well, well the state did nothing wrong here. There was no prosecutorial misconduct at all. They didn't conceal evidence. They didn't do anything illegal in the prosecution of this case. There was an eyewitness that testified. I failed to see how the defense lawyer did anything wrong. Uh, he, all he could do was cross-examine the eyewitness. Either the jury believed him or they didn't. In this case, they believed him. He was either telling the truth and this man really was guilty and got what was coming, or else he was lying and he's the one that did it. He did the wrong thing by lying, nothing that the state of Georgia did. So we're bending over backwards here to, to try to make things right to him out of a gratuitous payment. I think the least we can do is ask this man to follow the law and not commit any felony offenses during the time he's receiving payments from the state of Georgia. Chair recognized Senator from the 50th, 40th, excuse me. Senator Yield. I yield. Senator, isn't it true that your amendment is trying to be helpful to make sure that this guy is going to be compensated? Because without the amendment, there's a good possibility this thing fell. Well, I guarantee you I'll be voting against it if this amendment doesn't pass. Thank you very That's much. True. Chair, can I send from 33rd for a question? Senator Yale. Of course, my friend. Senator, uh, we've had these compensation resolutions come before us in the past, and uh, while you and I've served, is that not right? We have. And you have been opposed to them also. Generally speaking, I oppose these unless you can show me that the state of Georgia did something improper or illegal in their prosecution that was unfair to the defendant. If they concealed evidence or hid evidence or, or brought forth knowingly false evidence, Otherwise, I have to trust the jury system. And unfortunately, sometimes mistakes are made, but that doesn't mean that the taxpayer of Georgia are responsible for those mistakes. It's a hard fact of life of the system. Further yield. I will. Isn't it true that most probably your preference on, am I right, that your preference on this would be not to pass this one? That is correct. Okay. I knew you'd tell me the truth. Uh, further yield. I yield. Let me just ask you, if this man is treated differently than everyone else who's been injured, because I don't re ever remember seeing one of these types of amendments uh, attached to someone being compensated for a wrong, it, is it not true? I mean, it, 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 could he feel that maybe he's not cleared and the public has not blessed the fact that he is a, not a guilty person? And uh, having, it'd be like having probation or parole. Uh, after he's been cleared of that, an event. That's a good analogy for this. Uh, okay. uh, it could be that we have had this provision in other compensation resolutions. Yeah. I, in well, fact, I've pushed forward in committee before to do that. Well, I apologize. I didn't know that. But no, it's okay. Uh, I do think that, is it not true, that, that I have passed these in the past for constituents that have had similar circumstances and actually had one commit suicide because he could not receive a pardon by reasons of innocence, even though they had found him not guilty and overturned his conviction. Uh, isn't it fair that the state that we own together, that in the end of the day, after him spending time in our facility, that he couldn't leave, that we might, at the end of the day, be responsible for treating people right? That can be, but you raise a really interesting point that sort of troubled me. We do maybe one of these a year, some years not. Surely there are more than one person a year in the state of Georgia that's wrongfully convicted. 
Now, I hate that, but that's true. But if we're going to have that policy as a state, that if somebody is wrongfully convicted and they can be exonerated, that we're going to compensate them, then let's compensate all of them. And it's going to cost us a lot of money to do it, and we're going to be taking that money out of education, health care, public safety. You know, but it, what's fair for one is fair for all. What we're happening to now, whoever gets the best lawyer and politician that can come up here and get one of these compensation resolutions before us gets help. And all those other guys in prison wrongfully aren't getting a dime. Now, how are you picking and choosing among those people? And like I say, it's a sad fact of life. It is not right that it happens, but it is part of having a jury system. Occasionally, they make mistakes, and, and I hate it uh, that it happens, but I don't see where it's the state of Georgia's responsibility. And all our taxpayers that write in those checks every month, April 15th around the corner, we're making them pay this for this one individual when the state did nothing wrong. Last, last question. Last question. Sure. Is it not true that I have been here a while? You're a lot, lot, I think you're the dean of the Senate. And I have been here in years that we have had seven or eight compensation resolutions in the year to pass both houses, sometimes four, sometimes seven, sometimes five. And we do compensate these folks. But I would ask you, if we're going to compensate some of these folks, wouldn't it be right to compensate the one that has been found to be innocent and that has been that in a decade of his life has been taken and isn't it true that another price he paid was just five days from being able to go and serve our country that that does make sense but every single one of them is found to have been innocent they have all been released for jail before they do that and, and we don't have any guidelines to tell us what's the fair amount of compensation I mean, this guy spends 10 or no, we're the judge. Right? I mean, we're, the guy spends 10 or 11 years, and we decide that's worth 400,000. Two years ago, ago we gave somebody 1.2 million. You know, why is that guy's freedom less expensive or more expensive than this one's? It's just we have no guidance. We're just pulling money out of our general fund to pay these people out of the goodness of our hearts. And, and they, you know, I'm not saying they did anything wrong. It, it's they're deserving of it, but it's not our obligation to do it. I simply think this amendment is fairer because if we're going to show our gratitude and our generosity to these folks and give them this kind of money, let's at least make them follow the law from now on. Got to ask the chair for a question. Chair, can I send on the 10th for a question? Thank you, Mr. President. Would the senator yield? I do yield. Senator, I appreciate you bringing this uh, amendment forth. Um, and I'm trying to decide whether or not I'm going to support this amendment. Uh, my question is, if this amendment passes, I understand what you're going to do if it doesn't pass, but if it passes, are you supporting this bill? No. Thank you, Senator. No further questions, Senator. Thank you, Mr. President. Chair and I, Senator, on the 15th. Thank you, Mr. President. I intend to be brief because I think we have thoroughly vetted this project a subject matter over and over again, and it's been uh, highlighted in the newspapers uh, throughout the state. Um, I think we have an instance here of a young man who has been wronged one way or the other, and we all want to wash our hands of it and say, well, it's not our fault. But indeed it is because the very tangible thing you have is a person who has lost 11 years of his life. 11 years, over a decade out of his life. You can't deny that reality. As it relates to the amendment, I'm going to reluctantly support it. And I, but let me say first, I have never heard of an instance before we did the same thing to John White. John White was another young man who was deemed to be innocent by way of work from the Innocence Project and was released from jail after he was lied on by another person who said he did something that in reality that he did not do. He didn't do. 
yet we want to hold the feet to the fire after we agree that, well, look, we did you wrong, but we're going to make you pay unusual circumstances after the fact that we compensated you for something we did in the past. We want to tie something to your future actions as well. I think that's a bit odd. If the courts deemed him to be innocent, why the high standards for some people as opposed to others? Well, I think there's a failure to accept the court decision there as well. So what I want to do is encourage your support of the bill, and hopefully we can get this matter behind him. But more importantly, the young man can go on with his life and recoup what's left of it. If there are no questions, Mr. President, I yield the well. Chair Ignacio from 33rd. I'll be very quick, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate. It appears to me that this young man has a cloud over his head, and that cloud's going to follow him the rest of his life. He's, he didn't join the Marine Corps. He can't, he, I guess he's too old, even if he's been vindicated to join the Marine Corps now. That was his lifelong dream. He didn't create this cloud and this weather. He didn't deserve it. But he sat there for 11 years. And if we did give $1.2 million to somebody a couple of years ago and we don't have a system whereby we're able to judge these fairly, well, I'll say this fellow's being pretty reasonable then. But almost another kind of double jeopardy. Okay, I'm innocent. But if, I, if by chance something were to happen and I was accused again of something, in the back of my mind, I've never been really freed. It's another kind of mental double jeopardy. I'm free, I didn't do it, but your income depends on you, while no other citizens who's not been guilty of a crime has none of this uh, upon him. It is not right. Uh, I see the senator's form from the 46, but we are the judges and are the hold the responsibility for what happened. And I, I agree with the with the, the senator, the judge. Uh, uh, in his eloquence and experience. And I'm not going to vote for the amendment, I'm sorry. Uh, but this bill certainly, this resolution certainly ought to pass. And let's don't have him looking over his shoulder the rest of his life. Chair and I assume 31st. Ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, <clears throat> on the screen here in front of you are the charges that this gentleman who testified first that the guy named in this resolution was the guy, in fact, who robbed the store that he worked in. Now, at the time that this guy made that first testimony, he was a free man. To lie in court would mean that he subjects himself, and you lawyers can straighten me out on this, but to lie in court is, I believe, to perjure yourself. There's some pretty strict penalties for lying under oath. So when he was subject to those things, he said, this gentleman that we're seeking to um, reward with a bunch of money today was the guy who robbed him. The time between the robbery and that court date was relatively short compared to the time that he went back to the courtroom and said, that guy wasn't the guy to rob me. 
Also, the second time that he was in that courtroom, perjury didn't matter because the guy that was testifying was going to spend the rest of his life in jail regardless of what he did. There was no reason for him not to do something that would help a fellow inmate get out. Now, folks, we got the best judicial system, I believe, on the face of the earth. Is it perfect? Nope. But there was a jury who convicted this gentleman, or this guy, on his conviction. There were 12 peers who looked at all the evidence that was presented. Perhaps every bit of evidence wasn't presented. Perhaps they were misled. I don't know what took place, but there were 12 jurors who, by definition, were his peers, said that he was guilty of, of robbery. When he got out of jail, it wasn't a jury. It was a judge. The judge looked at it again and says, well, the witness says you ain't the guy, so you can go free. Now, I heard this bill and the explanation of this bill in the Appropriations Committee. I've done a little bit of research on it. I certainly uh, res res respect the Senator from the 13th and his wisdom and expertise on these type matters. But all of the things that caused this guy to go, or not that guy, that guy's going to spend his life in jail, but the Mr. Word, I believe it is, the things that caused Mr. Word to go to jail, other than the testimony of an of a eyewitness, you know, some have alleged, well, the, he didn't have good representation and all these kinds of things. But there's not been a bill introduced to correct any of those problems. We just take these things up every year or so. We turn somebody else out, write them a big check. If we were serious about solving this problem, there would be some in legislation introduced to resolve the issue that some say resulted in Mr. Word spending 11 years in jail inappropriately. Now, the amendment that I signed that's on the desk in front of you gives th this guy a little incentive to behave himself for the rest of his life. He's out. We, we, we can't put him back in jail, whether we believe he was guilty or not. We can't put him back in jail. But we owe the people of Georgia to do everything we can to ensure this guy behaves himself from here on out. So I would ask for you to support the amendment. And those of you who think that you know why this guy was wrongly convicted, I'd suggest that you introduce some kind of legislation and we don't do this again because we can't afford to be making these kind of mistakes, to be paying for mistakes, if you will, made by jurors. It wasn't the taxpayers of Georgia that, that failed this guy, if he was failed. It was the system and or the jurors. So I'd ask for your support for the amendment, and you vote your convictions on giving this guy $400,000. Thank you. Senator has yielded the well. I think everybody's had their say on this bill. Questions on the adoption of the floor amendment authored by the Senator from the 46th and the 31st. Is there objection? There is objection. All those in favor of the amendment rise, stand, and be counted if you're in favor of the amendment.
on the adoption of the amendment, the yeas are 31, the nays are 19, and the amendment has passed. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the bill? Is the objection agreed in the Portal Committee which favor passes the bill? Chairs none, the Portal Committee is agreed to. Shall the main question be now put? Are the objections? Chairs none, main question order. Shall this bill now pass? Questions on the passage of the bill. All those in favor will vote aye. Those opposed, no. Secretary will unlock the machine. Chair, recognize Senator Room 33rd. What purpose you rise? Parliamentary inquiry. State your inquiry. Is it your feeling that if, that if all of us have done nothing wrong, behave the rest of our lives, we won't lose our jobs? I'm not sure, but I do know that you've got a lot of passion. On the passage uh, or the adoption of the resolution, the A's are 49 and the nays are 5, and this resolution is therefore adopted. Um, Chair, recognize Senator from the 15th. I'd ask unanimous consent to suspend the Senate rules to first read a general Senate bill. Senate Bill 276 by Senator Harbison of the 15th and others. A bill to be entitled an act to amend Article 3 of Chapter 3 of Title 50 of the OCGA relating to other state symbols so as to provide that Georgia shall be a Purple Heart state to repeal conflicting laws and for other purposes. Is there objection? Without objection, we will assign it to the Veterans Committee. Going to run through a couple of, just so um, uh, for preparation purposes, uh, we are expecting the governor to arrive to address the Senate uh, in prob at probably about the 5.30 timeline. So we're going to run through a couple special orders. What are these ready? Chair recognizes Senator from the 51st. 51st on a special order, looking for a green card. Mr. President, I move that the Senate agree to the House substitute to Senate Resolution 293 as amended by the Senate. We'd like to welcome uh, Senator C's daughter, who's just become a doctor, uh, Wendy C. Oliver, who's with us today. Thank you very much. We passed the resolution honoring her, doing a wonderful job. Thank you very much. Did I point? I is there objection? I haven't read it yet. Or, I haven't read it yet. Read the, read the caption. Senate Resolution 293 by Senator Gooch of the 51st, a resolution honoring the life of Mr. Ralph A. Pierce and dedicating a road in his memory and for other purposes.
Amendment 1. Senator Gooch of the 51st offers the following amendment. Amend SR 293 by deleting 1986 on line 92 and inserting 1968 in lieu thereof and for other purposes. Through with the order, Mr. President. Chair and I, Senator 51st. Thank you, colleagues. Senate Resolution 293 and the amendment simply put the House name and road naming bills together with the Senate road naming bills. Mr. President, I yield the floor. All those in favor will vote aye. Those opposed, no. Secretary will unlock the machine. This is agreed to the House. Substitute. Like to uh, also welcome. Uh, the senator from the 10th uh, son, Elam Jones, who just got accepted to Westminster. Very proud of him. Very fit, athletic young man. A lot better looking than his dad, I can tell you that. So, all right, after this vote, I uh, would ask that senators please take your seats. Please take your seats. And our guests would uh, move to the side. On the Senator's motion, the A's are 49 and the nays are zero, and the Senate has agreed to the House substitute as amended. <laughs> Mr. Sergeant at Arms. Thank you, Mr. Sergeant at Arms. Please escort Your Excellency Governor to the rostrum at this time. It is uh, always a great, great honor when we finally get to a time where uh, sine die is, uh, is in view. And certainly this 40th day allows that to happen. Uh, and it's a tradition and one that we always look forward to when uh, each of our great governors come forward. Uh, I can tell you from my opinion that uh, this governor of our great state uh, has been one of the finest stewards uh, and has governed with great passion uh, and conviction uh, through and through. And this session, although there have been many challenges and many bumps in the road, he has been that steady hand to ensure that we're able to land this General Assembly and this great state in a very positive place, making it to continue to be the capital of the South and one that is known for its fiscal conservatism and um, taking care of our citizens. So. It's a great honor for me and this great Senate to welcome our great governor, Nathan Deal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thanks. 
to all of you for inviting me to be with you for just a few minutes this afternoon. I want to start out by saying that here in 1981 is where I began my political career, right here in this chamber. I have many fond memories of sitting back there on that back row. Uh, and you have a great view from back there, don't you, Bill? Uh, you can tell what everybody else is doing from that vantage point. But I appreciate the cooperation that I have received from the leadership here in the Senate, from uh, the, from the uh, Lieutenant Governor, his staff, your committee chairs, your vice chairs, and your subcommittee chairs, and all of you. Uh, there are many challenges that our state faces and will continue to face, but I appreciate the sincere and dedicated effort you put in to making this another successful session of the General Assembly. I think you probably will be in a position when the uh, gavel is finally hammered down later this evening to go home and say that you've done great things for the citizens of our state. I look forward to continuing to work with each of you, and I wish for all of you a, a very successful remainder of this year. As you go back to your districts, uh, I look forward to having the opportunity to visit with you back in your communities. And you've always been gracious to me and to my wife, and I thank you for that. And we look forward to seeing you after you leave town. Uh, although I must admit, uh, I too am looking forward to that timetable here this <laughs> evening. I do the wish the very best for you. You've worked hard, and I appreciate it. I appreciate the cooperation you've shown to my staff. As you probably have observed, I have some very dedicated and hardworking young people who are on my staff. I thank you for treating them with respect, and I feel confident that they have reciprocated and treated you with respect. Thank you all very much. Well, all those great comments the governor was talking about regarding his staff, um, they really have done a great job, all of them excluding the chief of staff, of course, uh, that many of you all know. But uh, no. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. He does a great job. Governor, thank you very much for being with us and your leadership. is the majority leader. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that Senate Rule 3-3.1A be suspended for the consideration of the governor's appointments. Is there objection? Without objection, the rule has been suspended. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that the reading of the governor's appointments be dispensed with since they have been printed and distributed by the secretary to each senator and that one roll call suffice for all appointments unless any senator designates an appointee be removed from the list and voted on individually. Is there objection to suspending the reading of the governor's appointments? Is there objection to the con confirmation of the appointments with the governor with one roll call vote? Chair hears none. Questions on the confirmation of the governor's appointments 
All those in favor will vote aye. Those opposed, no. And the secretary will unlock the machine. On the confirmation of the governor's appointments, the yeas are 51 and the nays are zero, and all the governor's appointments have been confirmed. The fourth budget, budget, budget. Chair recognized Senator from the or Chair recognize Senator on the fourth. I move the Senate adopt the conference committee report on House Bill 106. I'll Read the caption. Committee of Conference Report on House Bill 106. The Committee of Conference on House Bill 106 recommends that both the House of Representatives and the Senate recede from their positions and that the attached Committee of Conference substitute to House Bill 106 be adopted. Chair recognizes Senator from the fourth to present our budget. Thank you very much, Mr. President, members of the Senate. I'm proud to uh, bring you House Bill 106, the general budget for the fiscal year 2014 we're going into. On your desk are three things that I want to uh, point out to you. Of course, the uh, House Bill 106, the budget, the state budget, the general budget is, is on your desk. There is a differences report between the House and the Senate. So if you, you had something you were interested in and maybe the House position was uh, position you were interested in, you can look it up pretty easily there, and that's, that's pretty quick. And then for you to take home with you and to, to sift through for your columns and for the, the information that you want to put out to your district as a highlight sheet of talking points, complete with the numbers that you can look it up if you need more information. So I hope that those pieces are helpful to you. Uh, if you need uh, answers or anything specific, um, please see us afterwards. Uh, Jason Fernandez is still here. Uh, at the back of the differences report are all the bonds. I know many of you had interest in bonds, so all the bonds are back there. If you want to see it in writing, there it is right there. So I'm not going to take too long. Uh, I'm not going to, 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 I know that everyone has a lot to do and every minute is precious between 9 and 12, but let me just take one second and thank your budget staff for working all night last night to put this package together. Uh, we had an agreement about 3 o'clock in the morning, and uh, they've been here all night. That's, that's real dedication. I want to thank our conferees uh, who were also here till the wee hours of the morning, uh, Lieutenant Governor staff who, who were here and who've been so supportive through the process as well. Um, the, the, the House staff and the House uh, leadership over there on the budget, Chairman England, the, a, a really first-class guy who does a great job over there, and it's, it's my honor to work with him and to call him my friend. Th this budget wouldn't be here today in, in this shape without the governor's active involvement, and um, I just want to thank the governor and his chief of staff and, uh, for, and OBB director for what they have done to help us get together. And You know, when you think about it, when you're crafting something that's going to move our state forward for the next year, it really does take everybody working together. And I think that this year we did that maybe as good or better than any year I can remember as well. Just to remind you, this is a, this is a $19.8 billion budget uh, in state funds, and we've had some holes to fill. I'll, I'll tell you, the reason I want to mention Medicaid is some $224 million 
poll in Medicaid is to tell you that yesterday or last night or this morning, the governor recognized some $56 million in tobacco settlement funds that is the result of a, of a settlement recently. Those funds, those funds have been recognized and put into the revenue estimate and basically went right into Medicaid. So uh, our biggest hole will receive the funds that, that we had and that, uh, that process, that two-step process helped us to, to get this budget out. I'll remind you that there's 1.36% enrollment in our K-12 schools. The growth funds are in the budget and the funding of the teacher pay scale. Uh, there's enrollment growth for the Board of Regents, some $72 million uh, that's in there. The $50 million for bonds for the deepening of the Savannah River Harbor and that, uh, that economic development project is in the budget. Um, we added another $5 million to One Georgia. There's, there's an announcement in the paper today of, of some 700 jobs that uh, is being announced today, and there's some exciting things going on in economic development in Georgia. This may be a golden period of time, and we want to be sure that in One Georgia and in our REBA funds, we've got the funds for the Department of Economic Development to go out and, and bring those jobs to Georgia, and that, that, that ensures our future like nothing else as well. One of the things the governor brought to the table was $5 million for juvenile court incentive funding grants. And this, of course, is to, to go along with the juvenile justice reform and to help local governments to find alternatives to sending kids off to RYDC. We funded the second year of a three-year pay package for GBI agents and for DNR uh, uh, arrangers around the state. This is our commitment to them over a three-year period to bring them to parity. The archives, many of you are interested in the archives, uh, there's some $300,000 in there for them to, to get started in the Board of Regents at Clayton State in their new home there. We think that'll keep them all open and, and serving the public as well. There's, um, there's $7.2 million in charter system grants, the, uh, and, and there's an agreement in legislation now that will, will be some certainty in the way charter systems are handled from this point on, but that's fully funded as well. Many of you were interested in the sparsity grants uh, in, in the budget, in the, uh, in, the, in the Senate budget before. Well, those, those survived the budget process and are in the final budget as well. In the general budget, the House and Senate together restored the complete $1.3 million cut to school nutrition. So school nutrition is completely funded with no cut. <coughs> Thank you, Martin. And if you heard from your local school system about a possible large increase in uh, state health benefit plan premiums in the middle of the year. Uh, I want you to know those funds are still in the, in the QB formula, uh, and we've got some language in there that is going to help systems, that is going to, to ask the Department of Community Health to give school systems a heads up by this summer of where they believe uh, premiums are going to go so that they, even, even though they may have written their budget by the 1st of May or June, somewhere in there, they will at least know what the range of, of, of costs there might be for this next year, and they can certainly start out the year ahead as well. The tuition equalization grant that many of you heard about from private colleges that had been cut, uh, some $5.25 million, that, those funds are restored. The, the cut to Gwinnett College of some $8.25 million was fully restored in the final budget, and a new formula will be implemented that will uh, uh, begin to phase out a part of the funding for that startup college as well. There's a new developmentally disabled program. Uh, it's being piloted uh, in Georgia uh, at, at Kennesaw and it uh, probably will be at one other university in South Georgia. And this, this is a program that helps disabled students have the opportunity to attend college and to try to figure out where their life is going. If, if they're autistic and they've, they've, uh, they've gone, kind of run out of programs to participate in, this is a, a program that will be uh, through the governor's office of disabled, uh, disabled uh, citizens. Technical colleges, as you know, had uh, some $27 million in cuts. We restored $8 million of those cuts, and along with the $6.5 million for strategic uh, enrollment for jobs like truck driving, uh, we think we've got them headed towards a better enrollment, which will help them financially as well. I mentioned you've got a list of bond projects that the two bodies have put into the budget and, and the governor as well. And, and there again, I want to particularly take a moment, if y'all give me your attention, 
I want to take a moment and thank the governor publicly for helping with the Clayton State project. That was a project that was badly needed over the past few years, and uh, it's all right to clap. It really is. Uh, but the governor stepped forward and helped us. That was such a huge project. It would have really burdened our bond package, but he stepped forward and realized it was the right thing to do. So uh, I think I just have to say that. You can take a look at the bonds, and we'll certainly be glad to discuss them. And, uh, Mr. President, I'll be glad to answer questions. If not, I urge your adoption of the FY14 uh, House Bill 106 General State Budget. There's uh, no questions, Senator. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Urge your adoption. I cannot tell you um, how hard our Chairman of Appropriations works. Um, he, um, I think most of you uh, know that old raggedy car he drives out there. Uh, we all might need to take up a collection to buy him a new one. We, we would if, if it was legal, you know, but now that we're under gift bans, you know, we couldn't do that. Uh, <laughs> and we're not lobbyists. That's true. I hadn't thought about that. Um, but he's here late, and I'll tell you, he works um, harder than anybody that I know. And he was here we into the hours uh, with us and uh, didn't finish up until probably 3 a.m. So we appreciate him very, very much. The Senator has moved that the Senate agree, adopt the Conference Committee report to House Bill 106. All of those in favor will vote aye. Those opposed, no. Secretary will unlock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 54 and the nays are zero. This bill, MC Rex Constitution Majority, is therefore adopted. The budget is done. Hallelujah. Didn't look real good midnight last night. <laughs> On chair recognizes Senator from the 53rd. Mr. President. I move that the Senate adhere to its substitute to House Bill 143 and that a conference committee be appointed, sir. Chair points, Senator, is there objection? You read the uh, caption? Not yet. Oh, why haven't you? Because you, I haven't announced it? Read the caption, Evan. House Bill 143 by Representative Rossman of the 7th and others. A bill to be entitled an act to amend Article 2 of Chapter 5 of Title 21 of the OCGA related to campaign contributions so as to change certain provisions and for other purposes. Is there objection? Without objection, the Senator's moved. Point, Senator from the 16th. Senator from the 48th and Senator from the 53rd. Chair and I, Senator from the 17th. Looking dapper in his Sears soccer. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah. I move that the Senate adhere to its disagreement to the House substitute 
to Senate Bill 137 and that a conference committee be appointed. Read the caption. Senate Bill 137 by Senator Jeffries of the 17th and others. A bill to be entitled an act to amend code section 48-7-40.1 of the OCGA relating to tax credits for business enterprises in less developed areas and for other purposes. Is there objection? Without objection, the chair appoints Senator from the 17th, Senator from the 24th, Senator from the 54th. Chair recognized, Senator from the 37th. Mr. President, I move that the Senate agree to the House Amendment to the Senate substitute to House Bill 283 as amended by the Senate. Well, No, 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 no. The, uh, <laughs> the uh, senator, ha I mean, senator has that right. Chair recognized, Senator from the, we'll read the caption. You don't have the cap, no. Two, 283. <laughs> House Bill 283 by Representative Coleman of the 97th and others. A bill to be entitled an act to amend Title 20 of the OCGA relating to education so as to update and revise terminology to delete obsolete, unused, and unnecessary provisions and for other purposes. Amendment 1, Senator Tippins of the 37th offers the following amendment. By adding line 15 and replacing with be designed as the Public Education Innovation Fund Foundation to promote public-private partnerships and for other purposes. Amendment 1A, Senator Tippins of the 37th offers the following amendment to the Senate Amendment to the House Amendment to the Senate Substitute to House Bill 283 by striking adding on line one and replace with deleting. Through with the order, Mr. President. 
This was the same bill that we debated uh, a moment ago, Chair and I, Senator 37. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the Senate and guests. I bring before you uh, House Bill 283. Uh, I would move that we uh, agree to the House with a Senate amendment. Uh, the, I think you have the amendments before you. Uh, the in amendment one, it adds line 15 and replaces with be designated as Public Education Innovation Fund Foundation to promote public-private partnerships. Uh, amendment 1A corrects that. It would be uh, striking, adding, and replacing with deleting. And also on line 202, strike 65 and replace with 58. Mr. President, if there are no questions, I will yield the will. There are no questions. The question on amendment 1A is there objection? Without objection, Amendment 1A is adopted. Question now is on amendment or, or on the motion, or excuse me, Chair, Senator from the 56, you're recognized to do so. Thank you, Mr. President. Fellow Senators, we have a great opportunity here to take this bill. We put important controls on it to make it better and to increase it. Just like increasing what we typically do for inflation, this is going to give the opportunity for more people to give and more people to get the best education possible. This is a great bill to keep it at $65 million. We do not need to decrease it. We need to stand up for our students and we need to stand up for schools no matter where they are and who they serve. Please vote down the amendment and vote for the overriding bill. Thank you. Chair recognized Senator from the 37th. Hey, Luke. Thank you, Mr. President. I would point out that the current number is not 65. The current, number, the current number that's being paid on this scholarship program is $52,800,000, plus or minus a few dollars. This bill raises that cap to $58 million, a 10 percent increase. It's hard for me to see how this is inequitable when the rest of the state budgets are being cut due to lack of revenues. This will, this will have the effect of having an additional cut in state revenues of $7 million, excuse me, of $5.2 million. I don't disagree with the concept of student scholarship organizations, but I think in, the t in times of tough economic times, everyone needs to play by the same rules. And I know when we see public education faced with a billion dollar a year austerity cut, with total austerity cuts since 2003, almost seven billion dollars, I don't believe that a 10 percent increase in the student scholarship organizations is unreasonable. I'd ask your support of the amendments and the underlying bill. Mr. President, if no questions, I'll yield away. Uh, there are, is a question. For, Senator from 32nd, what purpose do you, you wish for a question? Just a question. Senator Yield? Yes, sir. If your amendment passes, it sends it back to the House for an agree, disagree. Is that correct? Or That's correct. The, is that the posture we're in? That's correct. That's correct. Thank you. Chair, recognize Senator from the 56th. Thank you, Mr. President. Will the Senator yield? Absolutely. Senator, just about how much do we spend per student in our public schools today, per year? Depends on which school district you're in, but on the average, the state spends about $3,400, I think, on a regular education student. I think they spend $2,700 on average. So in this case, with these students, if they were to receive this scholarship and they would be going to a private school, you'd actually be saving money in that part of the budget. Isn't that true, Senator? 
I'm not sure that it is. I don't think I have ever seen any statistics or documentation that this program actually takes people out of the public schools. I think this underlying bill and the accountability that, that we put into it and in requiring students to leave public education and go into private schools may add some more validity to that. But as far as doing a statistical analysis, if these students would have been in public schools anyway and would not have continued under public education, I, I, don't, I have never seen that study. Thanks, Senator. Chair, Thank you. Uh, Senator from the 42nd for a question. Well, Senator you Yes, sir. Is it not true that a yes vote now is a vote for accountability and, frankly, to increase the amount that's given to the scholarship organization? That's correct. And it's also a yes vote for the transparency that we have voted for and passed in the Senate. It's a vote for the underlying uh, changes into, ha into Title 20 that are so needed for us to pass. It's not just a question about the cap. This is an overall package, but the cap's not chancy when you're talking about a 10 percent increase on what's currently being paid. Amen. Chair recognize Senator from the 40th for a question. Senator? Yes. Yield, please. Absolutely. Isn't it true, and you and I spent a lot of time in this bill, and when it left the Senate, I believe it was at the 53 million number? Isn't it true we spent a lot of time working on this bill on a particular weekend, and when it left the Senate, it was at the 53 million number. Is that not true? Right. When correct. it went back to the Senate? When it left the Senate and went to the House. Uh, no, sir. It was, it was a $50 million cap with an accelerator. The Senate which, bill did not touch. Which, which made it approximately $53 million. We did not touch the right. money piece of it at all. That is correct. Yield again. Yes. Isn't it further true when it got to the House, it was our understanding in the last few days that there was agreement reached to take that thing to $65 million, even though we personally didn't support it. I understood that there was an agreement in the House, but it was not in the Senate version as it left. All right. So it's come back to us now after there was agreement in the House for the 65, and you want to go to the 58, right? Just so That's we're correct. And one final question will you yield? Yes, sir. No matter what we do on this particular thing, we've got to pass this bill because of all the various budget provisions are in this bill. This is the most important education bill we have. Is that correct? I guess that's debatable. It's certainly important. I'm not sure whether it's more important than the teacher evaluation bill that we had, but this is an important bill by, by no stretch of the imagination. Thank you very much, Senator. No further questions. Senator has moved. All those in favor of his motion, clear my screen, to agree to the House amend amendment to the Senate substitute as amended. Will vote aye. Those opposed, no. Secretary, I'd like the machine. On the pass of the bill, the yeas are 40, the nays are 11, and this bill, I'm Reps Constitutional, or excuse me, the Senate has agreed to the House amendment to the Senate substitute as amendment.
Chair recognized, Senator from the first. We'll, we'll get it. We'll, it. It's okay. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the Senate agree to the House Amendment to Senate Bill 134 as amended. Read the caption. Senate Bill 134 by Senators Carter the First and others. A bill to be entitled an act to amend Code Section 16-13-21 of the OCGA relating to definitions relative to controlled substances so as to revise the definition of prescriber and for other purposes. Chair and I, Senator on the first. Thank you, Mr. President. Senators, Senate Bill 134 was a bill that passed out of here that allows pharmacists to honor prescriptions from physicians out of state. It was changed in the House. The only thing that changed was the effective date, and we are in agreement with that. There is an amendment that is being offered to Senate Bill 134, and we are in agreement with that amendment. And I would ask for you to vote in favor of the amendment. Chair, can I, you have a senator from the 45th recognized for a question. Uh, would the senator yield? I yield. I, that amendment is not on our desk. Yes, ma'am, it is. It's Where? been on your desk. <laughs> no, it's not in the book. It's been on your desk for hours. Will the senator further yield? I yield. Is this the uh, vaccination bill? Yes, ma'am, it is, and that amendment will be addressed by the author. Will you further yield? I yield. So what did you change? What did I change? What's changed in the bill? As I said earlier when I was explaining, the only thing that changed over in the House and the reason it comes back to us is because the effective date was changed. So what you're doing is, will you further yield? Will you further yield? I yield. Is it not true that you have a disagreement with the chairman of the House uh, Health and you could not get this vaccination bill as amended? I know you're not speaking on the amendment, but I know you support the amendment. Is it not true that you could not get it through the House and that's why you're amending this bill? The, the amendment that is going through, the amendment that's being authored, that is being offered, and the author will speak on it in a moment, passed this body by a vote of, I believe, 47 to 7, and earlier in this session. And then it got a hearing over it the, in the House, and you'll have to speak to the author in order to understand what happened over there. But is it, would you further yield? I yield. Is it not further true that you are not able to get this vaccination bill through the House and that's why it's back in the Senate? Well, if you're speaking to me personally, I, I haven't, in my nine years here, I haven't had much success with the Chairman of House and Human Services in the House since I've been here. <laughs> Mr. President, I yield well. Senator is yielded. Chair recognized. Senator on the 54th. I've already recognized him, the Senator from the 54th to speak. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I will speak to my amendment. This is uh, what was Senate Bill 85, but it has been slightly changed. Uh, in an effort to try and be conciliatory and compromising, we have reduced the number of uh, additional vaccines from 11 to uh, 7. Um, and uh, that otherwise, it is the bill that passed this body 47 to 7 this year, 43 to 7 last year. Um, it did not get a committee vote either year. Um, in health, health and Human Services, the, the, the chair is correct that that is what that is the state of this legislation, and so I ask you uh, to again, as you have by overwhelming majorities in the past, support 
increased access to care, lower cost of health care. And Mr. President, I would yield for questions. If there are none, I'd yield the will. Chair, recognize Senator Member 28 for a question. Mr. President, thank you. Uh, parliamentary inquiry, if I may, at this time. Uh, as to germaneness of the amendment and it's uh, no 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 Senator, not at this you point. can't that's not in order no. thank you mr president chair can i send on the 45th for a question would the gentleman yield i yield to the chair um is it not true that this bill has passed i believe the vote was 45 to 7 in the senate but repeatedly y'all as in several members that are interested in vaccination. Is it not true that the House chairman has blocked this legislation and that's why you're trying to amend this bill? Chair, chair I, I, will, I will say that the bill has not been called for a vote. It has received a hearing in the House on two occasions and it has not been called for a vote. Uh, it's not my business to cast aspersions on the chair of the House committee. And I, I, I declined the opportunity to do that. No further questions, sir. Chair, can I send from the 45th? What purpose you rise? Parliamentary inquiry. The H.E. inquiry. Uh, Mr. President, could you rule on two different things, the germaneness of this bill and also the length of the bill that it's being attached to? The amendment is too long, I believe. Would you please rule on that? I will look at it.
All right, we're gonna we're going to um, we're gonna vote on this bill. Chair, recognize Senator from the 45th to speak to the bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the Senate, I know it's late, and I know that you may vote on this bill, and this bill may go across the hall. The chairman of the House Committee is coming in the door. And I know that you're probably, you voted 45 to 7 before previously on this bill. And I know that they're going to have another bill that's coming on. And I think the thing that is kind of disgusting to me is the fact that they're wasting your time and they're killing your bills. This bill is going to go back over on the House side, and this bill will sit over there, and it's not going to do anything because that chairman has blocked this bill not only this year, but next year. So I ask for your um, consideration to vote against this bill. There were seven members that voted against it before, and I ask your same consideration. I'll be glad to answer any questions. No question, Senator. Thank you very much. Senators move to agree the House amendment as amended. All those in favor will vote aye. Those opposed, no. Secretary will unlock the machine. Chair, recognize Senator from the 45th. Mr. President, is it not true that the Medical Association is against this bill and the reason they're against it is because it prevents medical homes from being formated? Chair's got great passion for which she speaks. On the passage of the bill, or excuse me, on the motion to agree to the House Amendment is amended. The yeas are 35 and the nays are 18. And the Senate has agreed. <laughs> Chair recognize Senator from the first. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the Senate agree to the House substitute the Senate Bill 216. Read the caption. Senate Bill 216 by Senator Carter, the first. A bill to be entitled an act to amend Article 6 of Chapter 4 of Title 26 of the OCGA relating to pharmacies so as to provide that the medical director of an emergency service provider may contract with more than one pharmacy as a provider of drugs and consultant services and for other purposes. Amendment 1 by Senator Bethel, the 54th, and others offer the following amendment. Amend the House Committee on Health and Human Services substitute to Senate Bill 216 by inserting after services on line 5 the following. To amend Code Section 31-12-3.1 of the OCGA relating to vaccination registry so as to authorize the Department of Public Health to enforce and for other purposes. Through with the order, Mr. President. The... Um Chair recognize Senator from the 54th. It's unanimous consent to withdraw the amendment proposed to Senate Bill 216 substitute. Without objection, the amendment is withdrawn. Is, is there, without objection, the amendment is withdrawn. Chair recognize Senator from the 45th. Commander inquiry. In her pretty purple sweater. Thank you very much, Mr. President. It didn't seem to do any good while ago, but. <laughs> But it is it not true that this is what I just spoke about five minutes ago and the Medical Association of Georgia is against this? I think he just withdrew the, uh, withdrew the amendment. That, that, yes, right. Withdrew the amendment. Correct? And so now the motion is to agree to the House substitute. Chair recognize Senator from the first.
Thank you, Mr. President. Senators, Senate Bill 216, you voted on earlier. It simply dealt with the emergency medical services and allows them to contract with more than one pharmacy. Added on to this over in the House was something that we are willing to agree to, and that is dealing with rural hospitals and having coverage of pharmacists on the weekends. It simply allows them to, to have the hub pharmacy, if you will, to have someone there within 24 hours, and if they have a satellite hospital with a, with a pharmacy that has less than 12 acute patients, with a hospital that has less than 12 acute patients, that they will not have to meet that same requirement. This is to meet a need in our rural hospitals and to keep them from having to close. It's something that's vitally needed, particularly in southwest Georgia, and I would ask for you to agree to this. Thank you, Mr. President. The Senator's moved. We agree to the House substitute. All those in favor will vote aye. Those opposed, no. Secretary will unlock the machine. I would like to have the Senate's attention for just a moment uh, to welcome the First Lady of the 37th Senatorial District, the First Lady from the 13th Senatorial District, and the First Lady from the 21st Senatorial District. Let's give them all a round of applause. Thank you all for being with us. They're all very... One thing that all three of those senators have in common is they all outran their punt coverage, I can tell you that. So, Senator from the 34th. President, isn't it true that if the wives were in here, we'd have a much better Senate? Oh, <laughs> girl. Ah, uh, I hear you. I hear you. That'd be a lot better behaved, I can tell you that. On the motion to agree, the yeas are 54. And the nays are zero, and the Senate has agreed to the House substitute. <laughs> Senator from the seventh is recognized. Mr. President, I move the Senate insist on its amendment to House Bill 104. Uh, read the caption. House Bill 104 by Representative Carson, the 46th, and others. A bill to be entitled an act to amend code section 40-2-86 of the OCGA relating to special license plates so as to add a special license plate supporting the Appalachian Trail Conservancy and for other purposes. Amendment 1. Amend the... Amend House Bill 104 by inserting before clarify at the beginning of line 3 the following. Provide for license plates for former members of the General Assembly under certain circumstances and for other purposes. Through with the order, Mr. President. Chair and I, Senator from the seventh to pres no, excuse me, is there objection? Without objection, we have insisted on the Senate amendment. I like it when we insist on the Senate's amendment. All right, it's time for our dinner break. It's going to be here shortly. No? Yep. We're insisting on the Senate's dinner break. We will stand at ease um, and have a little dinner break. Let's say 7.15, give you 45 minutes.